Okay, uh, let me start today's lecture. Uh, today's lecture is about neural network language model. And today uh, I will uh, talk about the rest of my uh, the uh, the uh, rest of the topic that I couldn't cover uh, last time uh, in advanced uh, neural network acoustic model. And then I will move to the neural network language model explanation. And today uh, we have a weekly assignment and the uh, the coding assignment. Uh, the, so uh, we will also spend the time to explain about uh, the both of the uh, both assignments. Okay, so uh, let's uh, move to the uh, 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 let's continue the uh, topic that I have done uh, last time, uh, which is uh, that uh, we still focus on the acoustic model. Last time, uh, the, I explained about feed for the neural network. And now uh, I will uh, the explain about the recurrent neural network, which I spent some time. And then the, the, I think during the explanation of the LSTM, I stopped it. So I will uh, the skip uh, most of the explanation and move to the LSTM explanation. So LSTM uh, has uh, two states. Uh, one is the recurrent state, and the other is a uh, cell state. And this is a different uh, from the uh, Elman type uh, vanilla uh, recurrent neural network, uh, which has a cell in the LSTM cases. In the LSTM, uh, the, I made uh, this kind of a block diagram. And I will explain uh, each component. Uh, the, the in detail. So in general, in the LSTM, we have to understand the behavior of the cell memory, cell state. This actually try to keep the history of the information of uh, the, the cell uh, will uh, the, the forget some information. And the cell can also uh, the, the, uh, memorize a new information comes from the input. And then cell keeping this information uh, for a while. And finally, if it is uh, needed, uh, the cell actually also output the, uh, the information uh, to the, uh, uh, the network. And then uh, there are kind of three uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, function. It will be forgotten. A uh, new information will be added. And the cell information will be the, the outputted at YT. And this uh, will be part is actually uh, mathematically represented as gating. So as I mentioned in the last time, uh, we will use gating to uh, replace the information about the will be. If this is completely zero, it will not happen. If it is one, it will happen. So this information is uh, quite uh, intuitive. Uh, however, uh, it is not super intuitive, I would say. If uh, gating is a scalar, it is super intuitive, I would say. Completely zero and doesn't uh, the, uh, the pass the information at all. Completely one and then uh, the completely pass the information. If this is 50-50 and then half the information will be passed. It is simple. But it's actually gating is not scalar. Getting is applied for each dimension. So this uh, that is, uh, that makes uh, the intuition a little bit difficult. Huh? But again, remember that uh, still, for example, all the kind of gating in all the elements can be one. And then the, uh, the, this happens mostly. All the information of the gating for all the elements uh, is zero. Then the information will be completely cut. Okay, uh, let's uh, the move to the, uh, each component uh, the in detail. So this uh, the gating uh, the is uh, the represented by G and some kind of subscript uh, uh, in this case is forgot. So first, uh, we're using the information of the input and the previously estimated state, and then uh, try to kind of judge whether we should uh, the keep the information or forget this information of the prior cell. 
So this uh, the gate is actually uh, the, uh, represented by this kind of information, current information and the context information. Next, uh, this information is first we uh, the convert uh, the, our input and the prior input to some kind of uh, input information, uh, the, uh, converted uh, input information. And then uh, we uh, the multiply the gating. Uh, this uh, means that whether we use this input information or not for the cell. So that's uh, the kind of information uh, we can actually represent. And then after that, it is added here. So the first part, uh, if, for example, we completely forget, and then uh, if we kind of accept this new information, and then this part is completely replaced with the new information without caring the history. Vice versa can also happen. But again, gating is uh, the element-wise operation. So it is very difficult to intuitively uh, making this kind of uh, interpretation. And finally, we, for example, store the information in the memory cell. And then uh, the, uh, the last part is whether we use this information to the output. Again, this is also uh, the, uh, controlled by the gating. This also has the same information as an input, uh, the current information of the data previously as the previous uh, hidden state. And then the, this uh, the parameter is actually different. So this is a kind of a, a main uh, the, the, uh, scheme of the LSTM. We have a three gate, whether we forget the previous information or not, is represented by G forget whether we use this new inform input information or not, this is represented by the G, G input gating. And whether we use this other uh, uh, stored information to the other uh, output, uh, this is also uh, represented uh, as the, uh, the, the gating uh, the information. And then finally, uh, we got uh, the hidden state uh, the, uh, the output. So by doing that, we can uh, 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 actually uh, memorize the important information uh, in the data driven manner uh, in LSTM. So compared with the, uh, the LSTM and the RNN, uh, LSTM actually can capture the long-term uh, history information uh, based on this kind of cell mechanism. And there are a lot of variants of the LSTM uh, the, the, uh, or other kind of uh, the, the operation. Uh, the other one is uh, the gated recurrent unit, GRU. This is also uh, the often used. Okay, so this is the, uh, the uh, LSTM explanation. And this part is used as a, uh, the acoustic model to uh, represent the input, a uh, combat the input information to the hidden state information uh, by using the LSTM block. And then we actually can also uh, continue uh, this approach incrementally with the multiple layers. This is the, uh, the, uh, the conventional uh, the LSTM uh, the acoustic model. And this is the, the summary of the LSTM. So compared with the, uh, the CNN, uh, the LSTM actually does not have so many configuration, number of layers and the number of hidden states and so on. In terms of the configuration, uh, it is actually quite easy to uh, the, the handle. However, LSTM has a, a one drawback, which is uh, we cannot actually parallelize it. As you can see uh, from uh, the basic uh, LSTM or recurrent neural network architecture, this computing should wait previous computing and then move to the next one, move to the next one. So this incremental step is very difficult to parallelize. 
So due to this kind of uh, the uh, reason, uh, people also uh, still uh, uh, prefer to use the uh, feed forward neural network or uh, the convolutional neural network because it can actually uh, the, uh, parallelize uh, the uh, computation across the time, uh, unlike uh, the LSTM. Well, however, LSTM can actually capture the entire context. So uh, the, due to that, the people actually started to uh, use LSTM from CNN or uh, the, uh, the feed for the neural network. But nowadays, uh, we also have an alternative option. Uh, this is uh, self-attention, or I call it a transformer encoder. So uh, the cellular attention uh, transformer encoder uh, actually is uh, the widely used in uh, many areas than speech. So I believe uh, many people actually heard about uh, this uh, the network architecture. But let me try to explain about the, the uh, cellular attention. So first, uh, the compared with the, uh, the, uh, the LSTM, cellular attention can also completely capture the input information. So I just kind of using this kind of picture. Uh, this is the LSTM and this is a cellular attention. And since uh, the LSTM has the, the arrow here, this is a bidirectional LSTM. And then uh, thanks to this arrow, uh, we actually can add uh, the, the each, uh, any of this kind of, uh, uh, the, for example, hidden state here uh, can have uh, access to all of the information. And the uh, self-attention actually also has a, a such kind of nature, but the arrow is not actually uh, the, the, uh, the horizontal. Uh, it's actually a tilted arrow. So horizontal arrow means that the recurrency, so we have to wait. But this, uh, the, the, uh, the, the tilted uh, arrow is actually uh, the performed in the layer-wise operation. Yes, layer-wise operation, we still uh, the, the cannot make it parallelized. This is uh, the same for all our network. However, please look at this kind of relationship. At least for each of the other uh, uh, state, there is no connection. So uh, this uh, means that, that we don't have our incremental process here. And then, uh, we can actually fully uh, parallelize uh, this computation. So self-attention is a kind of a very nice in terms of consider the entire context and also parallelize the computation across the time. And I will go through a bit more about uh, the, uh, the self-attention. So uh, the self-attention is weighted sum of all hidden states. Please remember, just simply weighted sum, that's it. But it's actually internally, it's a little bit complicated. So I try to kind of uh, uh, explain the high level uh, the approach. So first, uh, the, the, especially the transformer encoder style uh, self-attention, uh, what we will do is to uh, convert the input to some kind of variable. This is still fine, people can understand, right? This is just a, a similar to the field of work. Okay, so let's focus on this one. And then what cellular attention is doing? We just get the weighted sum across the order kind of uh, uh, the, the, this uh, the BT uh, based on this attention weight and then get the new other uh, HD, that's it. Uh, Again, this part is weighted sum. This B is just a linear transform. So this is uh, very simple, right? Basically, this is what uh, that uh, self attention is doing. However, uh, the discussion uh, here is how to estimate this attention weight, right? And again, there are a lot of ways to compute the attention. But the, uh, the uh, transformer encoder is actually using one of the most simple attention weight. So what is attention? 
So this is uh, the actually probability, but probabilistically uh, make a relationship between the different uh, two time stamp, right? So uh, the, for example, if uh, we try to kind of uh, the make this kind of attention wait, this means that we try to uh, make the relationship of T and the T dash, okay? And this relationship is uh, the, 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 the summing over to get the new one. So the next target is how to get the relationship of T and T different T dash, or even the same one. And then uh, the, the, uh, there are a lot of ways to uh, the make a relationship. Uh, the first, uh, uh, the most simple approach probably would be just compare the distance, right? L2 or L1 and so on. Or we can just throw it to the neural network and then getting the, uh, the some similarity. That is also one way. Uh, there are a lot of ways to actually get the similarity uh, of other uh, two kinds of points, right? And then uh, the one of the most simple approach is just using the inner product, okay? And the inner product actually, uh, the, we using a little bit parameterized form uh, so that we converting each of the kind of uh, the two other points to be first converted to the different space and then uh, making the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the making the uh, inner product to get the similarity. So we have uh, some linear uh, the, the transformation uh, which uh, the, the makes a kind of model to be powerful, but still uh, please consider that this is just uh, we get a kind of uh, uh, some distance or some kind of similarity. And now it becomes scalar. Now we each of the point, we have a relationship represented by the scalar, okay? And then uh, the how to convert it to the probability. We just throw it to the softmax. By doing the softmax, uh, we can actually get the probabilistic representation of the similarity. And then that's using this one for the weighted sum. So this is a basic concept uh, of the self-attention operation. I uh, just kind of using the uh, uh, most uh, the popular one, uh, the, the transformer encoder as an example, but sometimes we may not need this uh, the transformation. Maybe we can even simplify that. But this transformation is actually useful to uh, change the dimension to be the uh, control our dimension. So people are often using it. And again, this part, now everyone is using the uh, inner product, but it used to be people using a lot of crazy uh, the attention weight. And then uh, the making the kind of similarity and then we just throw it to softmax. It becomes probability. And then we can get the weighted sum. And one more important part, all the operation here, this one, just a matrix operation, right? We have to do this matrix operation for all T. But you, everyone knows that this can be written by matrix operation, right? easily. So this is very efficiently computed. Same for this one. Uh, this weighted sum is also uh, efficiently uh, computed by the matrix operation uh, and so on. Mm -hmm. This one is also parallelized. This one we can also parallelize. And softmax operation can also be parallelized. So now uh, we actually can parallelize all the processing. And then we can still get the benefit of the full context. Uh, this is actually uh, the key, uh, the idea of uh, using self-attention. And then this is actually self-attention is one block of the component of the transformer encoder. And actually transformer encoder is combining the other uh, component and so on, which I will explain in the next week. Uh, it's actually combining the cell attention, feed forward, layer normalization, positional encoding, and so on. 
And again, I will explain uh, this part uh, later. But anyway, uh, please add, 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 uh, uh, remember that uh, by using this self-attention, we can capture entire context and we can also compute everything uh, the part in the parallel form. So this is quite GPU friendly. Sounds like very cool, right? However, there is one drawback, especially when we apply it to the speech, we have an issue, which is that this part, we have to compute this other uh, probability for all t and t, t, t dash. Of course, this part is still we can parallelize it, but we have to actually explicitly allocate this memory and this computation. And this is actually very expensive uh, for speech processing, especially usually speech is 10 seconds of the speech, a 10 second or uh, some uh, other amount. And then this computational cost is actually uh, that becomes the other square. Uh, 10 second of the speech, usually we the 10 millisecond shift. So which means that we have a thousand frames uh, for uh, this uh, the sentence. And then uh, the computational cost is actually square. So this means one million. Uh, please imagine just only 10 seconds of the speech, which is we usually process, becomes one million uh, order of the training. So uh, self-attention is not purely used in speech processing, except that people are actually combining it with the downsampling. And the downsampling, uh, as the downsampling method, uh, again, people are using the CNN sprite that I mentioned on uh, uh, Monday. And I will explain a bit more uh, about this uh, the transformer encoder and the transformer itself in the uh, attention-based uh, ASR. But today, just uh, remember that this uh, the, the cell attention uh, transformer encoder block is uh, used for uh, the, the acoustic modeling. So this is a, a summary of the advanced acoustic models. Uh, people initially started feed forward, but moving to the CNN, uh, the RNN or STM, and then transformer encoder. And each method has a pros and cons. And the people actually initially uh, moved from the feed forward neural network to the LSTM. And then uh, later uh, moved to the transformer encoder. Uh, since uh, the, the, it is, uh, the, the can consider the entire history similar to the LSTM, we can also parallelize the training, uh, which is similar to the CNN or feed forward neural network. Uh, and we have our, our memory issue, but the downsampling uh, can somehow mitigate this issue. So this means that the CNN and the transformer encoder combination is actually uh, the used often uh, for our acoustic model uh, in this other current uh, state of the art. Okay, this is uh, the, about the advanced uh, the, the, the neural network for acoustic modeling. Any questions? Okay, not then that I will uh, move to the uh, next part, which is the uh, language model. And language model part also a uh, deep neural network replacing the uh, basic uh, the model like engram. And I will explain about uh, this uh, the language model uh, the uh, the uh, revolution uh, based on the uh, neural network. First, uh, the one uh, of the issue uh, of the, uh, the uh, language model uh, is that we have to consider the very long context. And then the, the how to uh, the, the deal with this kind of a long context. We first uh, the, uh, consider the joint probability and then factorizing it. By doing that, at least we can avoid uh, uh, the uh, joint probability problem, but it doesn't change the difficulty. We have to still uh, deal with this kind of our, uh, the, uh, the uh, probabilistic 
uh, the program. And then uh, n-gram uh, replacing this uh, the, the part uh, by cutting the history. By doing that, we can actually uh, make the n-gram to be tractable and we can use the context to some extent. But as I mentioned, uh, n-gram has a strong limitation, which is we actually cannot uh, consider the long context. So if we consider the long context, second sentence is quite long. But the n-gram actually cannot consider this uh, long context. So they don't have uh, enough other uh, context information of doc and the my office. So in the Enneagram world, a uh, doc can uh, come to my office. Okay, so the other issue is the sparse representation, which is, we also discussed in the counting part, but I will just want to emphasize it. So anyway, the, uh, the this uh, the counting means that uh, we don't distinguish with the other uh, the element of the, uh, the word in the vocabulary. And if uh, some of the vocabulary is appeared, then it goes to this kind of one. And the other cases are completely zero. So all the other uh, representation is uh, like this. Uh, just one somewhere, and the entire, uh, the other part is zero. This is simple, but this is probably too simple, right? Uh, for example, I kind of prepared these uh, three uh, sentences. Uh, I want to go to CMU, I want to go to Pittsburgh, I want to go to sleep. Uh, which one are similar? in terms of the sentences. Of course, one and two, right? Well, probably some people may, uh, they, how they say, uh, uh, remind that the CMU means that, that, the, uh, that we have to work hard and we cannot sleep. So may, someone may connect the CMU and sleep, but they generally not, right? This is obvious for us. However, as I said, uh, one hot vector representation cannot distinguish this kind of three CME Pittsburgh and three. Uh, the, this is just different, zero. Or this is exactly same, CMU and CMU, it goes to one. Uh, that's it. So if we consider the context, we may add uh, the uh, relax this issue, but in general, this passive representation uh, is a critical uh, problem uh, when uh, the, we use the uh, uh, n-gram uh, counter-based uh, the statistics. And then uh, the, the natural kind of uh, the extension would be if we extend this one hot representation to be more rich representation, and then we can actually solve these issues, right? For example, if uh, the, the uh, convert CMU and the Pittsburgh to uh, the sum vector, this is not one hot vector, but some dense vector, and then uh, the compare the, uh, the uh, distance or similarity uh, using a cosine or whatever. And then if making this kind of design, and then we can actually distinguish CMU and the Pittsburgh as similar, uh, and the sleep uh, can be bit far. So this uh, the technique, uh, the two kind of are uh, the converting the original space to the, uh, the more meaningful space uh, is uh, the, we call it uh, the embedding. And the word embedding is actually quite popular and quite powerful. I just uh, picked up the uh, word uh, embedding example. It may be too small for you guys to see that. Um, even for me, it is a little bit too small. Um, but the, let's try to find some similar word. Group and groups 
Yes, similar. Cool. Yeah, these are also similar, right? So it seems like this kind of a word embedding technique may help us to uh, improve the uh, language model. And how to obtain this uh, the, uh, the, the embedding, by the way, this is, uh, there are several studies actually. And one of the approach, uh, the original approach is called skipgram. Uh, one of the original approach is called skipgram. This is actually uh, the, from the, uh, this word go to try to kind of predict the neighboring word. So we only have this word and then try to kind of uh, uh, the predict other uh, uh, the, uh, context word. Uh, this requires a lot of information, right? For example, uh, the to estimate this one from Go, maybe you guys may actually differ because Go mostly are uh, the close to the two, right? Because it is a phrase. So uh, the, this uh, actually problem is try to capture such kind of syntactic information and the semantic information as well. So by using this uh, the skipgram uh, based estimation and then uh, making a kind of a language model, uh, making a, a, this kind of a, a, a embedding problem. And then it turns out that uh, this uh, problem can build uh, this kind of a very cool uh, word embedding space. And the word embedding itself has a lot of uh, the, the studies. And if you guys are interested in, you guys can also check some of the papers. But what I want to kind of emphasize here is that we have a two problem for the n-gram. One is a long range dependency. Uh, the other is a one hot representation. And actually a recurrent neural network language model solving both problem with a single model. So this is a kind of a, uh, the, the, uh, one of the uh, block of the component of the uh, recurrent neural net network language model. Input is the previous. I think this is uh, wrong. No, it's depend on the definition. Okay, yeah, it, I think it's fine, sorry. Uh, input is a previous token, previous word. And then output is a current word. So it is very similar to the skip problem. Skip problem is given uh, this word to uh, the estimate the context information. And then the uh, language model is also given the history to predict the next word, right? So uh, it is very natural that the previous uh, the token is uh, the, uh, the having an input and then predicting the next word. And this is actually uh, the uh, recurrent neural network structure that I explained before, right? First concatenated with the previous hidden state and then uh, doing some kind of linear conversion. I, I kind of uh, the, uh, omit the bias, but the, in many cases actually bias term also exists. And then uh, we using the uh, nonlinear uh, sigma activation. Uh, then we actually uh, the, uh, uh, continue this kind of process incrementally. So this is a very kind of a, uh, the, the basic decant neural network that I explained uh, in the acoustic modeling part. And the, this is very obvious that uh, from the previous lecture, the kind of neural network can capture long range dependency, right? So long range dependency is clear. Next one, this part. This part is actually converting. This one is one hot representation, but this part is matrix. So this means that after this process, uh, this uh, the one hot vector is converted to the continuous vector. So by using this recurrent neural network, 
we actually can convert the one host intervention information to the continuous vector with the embedding vector. And then we can also capture the uh, long range uh, dependency and so on. So this is actually uh, the, the uh, power uh, of the recurrent neural network, which can solve the two critical problems in n grams at the same time. And of course, uh, the Elman type recurrent neural network has an issue uh, that uh, the, it's actually cannot uh, fully capture the long context. In this case, we can just use the LSTM, right? And then actually many people are now using the LSTM based recurrent neural network for the language model. And then I just want to explain about the more uh, for the uh, example of uh, the LSTM based uh, memory uh, behavior. So uh, this uh, LSTM try to model this, I want to go to my office or something like that. And it is very obvious that I and my have a strong relationship, right? So hopefully language model want to capture this information, right? And then how LSTM behaves. For example, in this time step two here, I is inserted to the LSTM as an input. And then hopefully gating is working to store this information to the LSTM. It happens if this G gating becomes one. Although again, you know, this is our, uh, the, the uh, the, for the, uh, the explanation purpose, it is actually vector and it is very difficult to interpret, but uh, the, it is just an example that how LSTM would possibly work uh, based on the LSTM. So if G calls, uh, if uh, the, uh, this uh, timestamp I call to, and all the kind of gating becomes one, we can uh, send this information to the memory, right? Here now we have an I here, and then other uh, three, four, five. Basically, we want to keep this information right. What is the expected behavior for the LSTM then? If G forget, uh, it's always uh, the the uh, one, and then uh, this means that we actually can capture the previously uh, the, the, uh, stored uh, memory information. In our case, it's I. So the information I is actually captured here in the input gate and maintained here, 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 okay? And the last one, now we move to this uh, the target my, I and my could be very, uh, the, uh, the related, right? And then uh, if the output gate becomes completely one, we can actually connect it. So by using the LSTM, we can possibly theoretically have uh, this kind of uh, obvious path. So this is a uh, power of the LSTM when we apply it to our very long sequence. Okay, so the next uh, the, the possible uh, the language model is actually a transformer, self-attention that I mentioned. Actually, many people now using transformer also as an alternative to the language model because same for the, uh, our discussion in acoustic model, transformer has the light uh, the computational cost uh, in terms of parallelization. Okay, then the question is, is this self-attention network can actually uh, the predict the next word P W3 given W1 and W2? Yeah, answer is actually yes, but it becomes super obvious. Uh, what happened is that this one is fully connected, right? And then uh, the actually instead of only checking the W1 and the W2. We also have a this path. W3 input also affects the W3. 
And if uh, this is a kind of a very, uh, the, how to say, uh, the, in some sense, clever neural network, what happens? They just copy it. Uh, this is cannot be used for the neural network language model, right? So to avoid this kind of behavior, a neural network language model is actually uh, setting a constraint to the attention weight. Like for example, in this uh, PW3 given W1, W2 cases, uh, we actually can uh, the, uh, the, the removing the path from here to here, we can actually uh, the avoiding to just copying the, uh, this model. And then we can actually well predict uh, the, the W3 only given the history and so on. So this constraint is called the causal constraint. And then uh, the, if uh, the, we uh, the, the make this kind of a causal uh, the relationship, uh, we can actually uh, predict uh, the language model uh, well. And the next uh, the question is more like a little bit implementation, but how to make this kind of causal relationship? Uh, I just kind of uh, the put the, uh, the attention um, equation here, which I kind of used before. And how to make this kind of a causal uh, relationship? Of course, this, this is very easy, right? We just compute our attention and then, oh, this part is causal. So we can just insert a zero, probably. Is that correct? Actually not. This actually uh, breaks the sum to a condition, right? If we changing some uh, the probability uh, from some value to zero, and then we actually cannot satisfy the sum to one condition, right? So please do not do that. By the way, this is one of the, uh, the typical mistake uh, people do when you guys are actually uh, the, the making some kind of a uh, causal transformer or some other variant of the structure, uh, the self-attention. Instead, uh, how to do it? Uh, we often use the minus infinity or a minus very large value or minus infinity. And then the, the, it depends on the kind of pro programming languages. Uh, NumPy may uh, or uh, the uh, titles uh, will kind of handle this kind of a special symbol. But in, in the other languages, maybe they do not have a well-defined minus infinity. In that case, maybe you can uh, the make uh, the set a very large minus value. That is actually fine. And then actually this other uh, part, if using the minus infinity here, this part becomes zero. And then the other part has some other uh, finite probability and also uh, satisfy the sum to one condition. So this other uh, approach uh, is uh, the, the very important if we want to control the attention, not to attend to some specific point. This is, I made an, uh, the, I use a causal transformer as an example, but actually there are a lot of uh, the, the scenes. You use this kind of technique, padding or blocking or other whatever, and then other using this technique. And the other approach, uh, the other kind of comment is that how to implement this one? Just for all the kind of our, uh, the softmax computation, we check, scan the, the, the all IJ element. This is a little bit inefficient. Instead, uh, what we will use is that we prepare uh, this uh, the, uh, the, uh, the kind of the matrix, which has the exactly same dimension as the, this uh, the, uh, the uh, this uh, types of the value. And then uh, we actually are uh, the performing the uh, element-wise multiplication. By doing that, we can actually uh, the, uh, compute uh, this uh, the, the, uh, masking, uh, this uh, the uh, causal uh, transformer, uh, the relationship, just using the uh, uh, element-wise uh, multiplication.
So this uh, technique is called masking. And the masking is quite important. Sometimes, depending on your situation, you may use the zero or some other special value and so on. But preparing the mask and then doing the element-wise operation, this is a very efficient way. In a, instead of just scanning all the kind of a, a matrix value you are computing, and then uh, changing it uh, depending on the, some kind of a condition. So please uh, the, the remember this masking technique. So actually, in other words, uh, transformer is from here to here, we actually don't have to change anything about the implementation. What we uh, have to change is we just prepare the mask function, apply it, that's it. So there is no other change in the main uh, program. So this is actually another very strong uh, the, uh, the generalization uh, of the self-attention uh, transformer-based approaches. And the masking technique is actually used for many other problems. Uh, the, as I mentioned, the padding is also another uh, the, uh, the masking technique. And recently, uh, the people also using the masking uh, for the uh, uh, this kind of uh, for, uh, the estimation program. These are kind of the, the, the how to say opposite types of the uh, skip gram. But anyway, the problem is that given W1, W3, and W4 to estimate the W2, we make this kind of program. Uh, and then uh, the try to estimate uh, this uh, the uh, W2. But uh, again, uh, if we have uh, this connection, it's actually uh, the, uh, started to just copying this uh, the word. So we masking this part. And then uh, the, the using the other context information to estimating this word. This other uh, approach is uh, called masked language model. And this uh, masked language model is used for many of the pre-training model in the, uh, the NLP, uh, in, including BART uh, and so on. Mm -hmm. And even in speech recognition, this uh, masked language model uh, technique is used for the other speech self-supervised model uh, or some other variant uh, of the models and so on. Okay, so uh, that's the, uh, the, uh, 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 the modeling part uh, of the neural uh, language model. We could have our, our, our vanilla LST, uh, RNN, or we can extend it to the LSTM, or we can use a, a transformer uh, and so on. And by doing that, we can actually significantly uh, improve the speech recognition performance. So this is a, a little bit old uh, the work, uh, but I just uh, extracted from the, some of my results, uh, my team's results for the uh, uh, noisy speech recognition. And in this case is we only changing the language model. Uh, from trigram to five gram, we using a long context, we actually get a significant improvement. But the, we observed that six gram, seven gram actually didn't get any improvement. By switching the recurrent neural network, we can get the further improvement. And then by using the LSTM language model, we got other additional improvement and so on. But this is not only for this task. Generally, by using the uh, recurrent neural network language model, we can get this kind of a significant improvement. Okay, let me a little bit talk about uh, the, uh, the, uh, the other application of the recurrent neural network language model. It is, does not have to be recurrent neural network language model. It can be engram uh, and so on. But anyway, actually language model can generate a sentence. So for example, first we pick up some word, right? And then, throw it to the uh, uh, neural network language model as a condition. Then we can get the probability. And then we can sample 
the next word, right? And then given generated this word as a condition, we can generate the next word. And the, by uh, the, uh, repeating this process, language model actually can generate a sentence. And this property is actually quite powerful. And many of the, the strong language model is basically using this form. And one of the example uh, is that this is just purely generating the sentence. But if we put some informative context, what's happened? One of the example, for example, let's put image here. In this case, I uh, put the image here. And then this is first conditioned and getting some features. But later, a uh, recurrent neural network is generating a sentence. In this case, it's a uh, dog is sleeping or something like that. Okay, cool. This uh, the, uh, methodology seems to be used for many others. And then the uh, most important, most famous uh, example is uh, translation, machine translation. First, let's uh, throw the input. In this case, we throw the input of the English sentence. And then LSTM actually can provide the vector using this context. And then after that, just using language model. But in this language model, we using the Japanese from English to Japanese. And then we can actually uh, that generate the uh, Japanese uh, models. So this uh, is the, the, the one of the uh, beginning of the trial of the neural uh, machine translation. Basically, uh, the, the information, uh, the important part is that getting the context from the input and then making it at the condition. And then given this condition, asking the language model to generating a sentence. Can we use this uh, approach to speech recognition? Actually, yes. In this case, uh, what becomes the context? Speech information. And then speech information to generating the, uh, the text information. So by using these other uh, approaches, we can actually realize uh, the speech recognition. And it uh, turns out that we don't need uh, any intermediate uh, representation. So this is the one of the end-to-end uh, uh, -end speech recognition called attention-based ASR, which I will explain in the next week. Okay, so uh, this is a, a, a summary uh, of uh, the today's uh, the presentation. Uh, in the, uh, the, uh, the, I think before the fall break, uh, we started from the Ngram and we had a, had a lot of issues in the Ngram. And the LSTM uh, language model uh, actually seems to uh, solve uh, this problem. And then not only solving this problem, this strong language model component can be also used for the speech recognition, which will be the uh, attention-based encoder decoder that I will explain the next week. Okay, uh, that's it uh, today. And uh, uh, any other questions, any questions?